Now, weather is what we experience every day. The climate, however, is a statistical quantity, namely the average weather over a time period spanning several decades. If we consider the last few decades, we can clearly see that the Earth has warmed up. Precipitation has also shifted. The general rules of thumb are that dry will become drier and wet will become wetter. And the rising sea level poses new problems, increased coastal flooding and the salinization of land that threatens the farmer's livelihood. In Europe too, there's been an evident increase in extreme heat and in the risk of droughts. The climate is a complex system. If we want to understand which factors affect the climate, we must understand in the first place how it works. Professor Mojib Latif is the head of Ocean Circulation and Climate Dynamics Research Division at the Geomar Helmholtz Center for Ocean Research, Kiel, and will explain the basics of the climate system, such as the greenhouse effect and the Earth's radiation balance, in the following units. When talking about the climate, we generally speak about the state of a whole system, and this is the climate system. We usually perceive climate change through the atmosphere, for example, through changes in air temperature or precipitation. However, they do not necessarily originate from the atmosphere, but rather from other components of the climate system. These components of the climate system are the atmosphere, the oceans, the biosphere, the cryosphere, and of course, the land. And all these components combined constitute the climate system. And when we talk about climate, we mean the state of the whole system. Now, these individual components have very different properties. Let's begin with the atmosphere. Here we have a timeline beginning with a few seconds and running up to millions of years on which we have positioned the various climate subsystems according to their own characteristic timescales. On the far left, we see the atmosphere, a rapidly varying system. This means that fluctuations, weather fluctuations, are very short term in nature since the atmosphere responds to external influences very rapidly in the course of days, maybe a few weeks. Then we have the sluggish components of the climate system. First of all, the oceans with their different layers which we differentiate. The top layer, the well-mixed layer of the ocean, responds within periods of weeks, months or maybe even a few years. Then we have a thin layer of ice that floats on the ocean. We call it sea ice. This also responds relatively quickly over a period of months to a few years. And then we have the deep ocean. The ocean has an average depth of almost 4,000 meters, a tremendous mass. This mass takes time to react. That's why the deep ocean has a very long internal time scale of centuries to millennia. And to the far right, the continental ice sheets, they respond even slower, sometimes needing millennia or even longer to respond to external forcing. In between, there is a very broad range where we have the biosphere that responds seasonally, but partly also on timescales of thousands of years. Forests, for example, take a long time to respond. This takes longer than years or decades, sometimes even centuries. The climate of a planet is mainly determined by the composition of its atmosphere. Let's examine Earth's atmosphere. It's made up of about 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. And then there are several noble gases amounting to about 0.9%. That would already be 99.9%. If this were it, then our planet would be an icy waste. But fortunately, there are still some trace gases, as we call them, some of which are called greenhouse gases, and these greenhouse gases warm the planet. Water vapor, carbon dioxide, and methane are particularly important trace gases. These three gases ensure the relatively mild conditions on this planet and make it habitable. 